Oh, it zoomed in. Can you zoom out? Okay. So, this is physics outreach for week two. Um, the first week, we learned what acceleration, uh, velocity, and position were and how they related to each other. And I felt like this, the second week, we um, used it in problems to figure out how to solve them. So this week I'm going to be showing my wife Christina how to do uh, one of the homework problems that we were assigned. Okay, so in one of the problems we had it where it was explaining how ball bearings were made and molten metal is dropped from the top of a tower and as it falls it cools before it lands on the ground. And the problem stated that it took 3.80 seconds for the molten metal to cool. And so that's how the tower needs to be tall enough that the ball cools before it hits the ground. So first thing you do in a physics problem is you draw a picture. So you draw the little tower, and then I'm going to draw the ball dropping. And what these dots indicate is uh, the, I suppose how fast the ball is moving. So when they're close together, so basically the dots are put on here every second. So the distance between these two dots is one second. And since they're very close together, they haven't moved very far in that one second time. So they're, it's not moving very fast here. But now here, in one second, they've moved more. So it's moving faster. So, you know, you've got your little velocity uh, velocity vectors. What? Wouldn't you think if something is moving faster, it would be closer together? Well, no. Like I, I mean, yeah, so wouldn't you think if it's closer together, it would be going faster? All right, well, let's think of it this way. So count to, start counting and say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, okay? okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start and I'm gonna move my hand slowly. And every time you say uh, Mississippi, I'm gonna put a dot, okay? okay? So go ahead and start counting. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi. Right. So notice that the dots are evenly spaced because there was no real acceleration. You weren't counting faster or slower. You were counting at a constant speed. And so that's what that means. Now, uh, I'm gonna move my hand a little bit faster, but I want you to count at the same speed, okay? Okay. So go ahead and start. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. So. So there, there was a little bit, my hand sped up a little bit here towards the end. But you can see that you counted only five seconds and it covered a greater distance at the sec and the dots are further apart because my hand was moving faster than when it was moving up here. So the dots further apart means that it's moving faster. Okay, so let's see. And then we also know that the acceleration for this ball, the only thing acceleration that's work that's uh, you know affecting it is going to be gravity, and gravity is pointing towards the bottom of the tower. So the acceleration is gravity. Are each ball weight the same? Yeah, this is this is just one ball. Yeah, each each ball is the same weight. I mean. 
I guess. But it won't, it won't make a difference with this problem because um, I suppose with this particular problem, we're only focusing on one single ball okay. that's falling to the bottom. Plus the, uh, the mass of an object doesn't affect how fast it falls to the ground. Remember that whole thing with the, the guy on the Tower of Pisa, he drops two things and they both hit the ground at the same time even though they weigh differently? Okay. Oh, you don't remember that? No. Oh, okay. The Lean Tower of Pisa? Yeah. Oh. I, oh. I know what that is. I must have not watched the video. You can show me after this one. Okay. So, um, next we need to decide where the origin is. So, you know, a lot of people would put it here, right? With the positive x going here and the positive y going here. But if you do Can that... Can show it? Draw it and show me? Sure. So a lot of people will put it, this is the positive y, this is the positive x. But if you do that, do that. And these two would be negative. Yeah, that's that positive. That's gonna be negative. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So, but if we do that, then we don't know what this position is. We know that this position down here is the the height of the tower or at least the y-coordinate of it is, but we don't know what this coordinate is. Or I suppose we could say that this position is zero because it's the ground, and this position is the height of the tower. But then things are going negative. And then... So anyway, when I was talking to Gary, one of the tutors here, he suggested that instead just flip the universe upside down. He, th those are my words, he, did, he didn't say that, but I mean, I think that's part of why I'm, I think I'm gonna like physics is because you just flip the universe upside down to suit your needs. <laughs> so instead, we'll make this the origin, okay? okay? And, and this is what really got me, we'll make this the negative y-axis, so that this is the positive y. So this ball is falling up. <laughs> that means... So we'll make, well, this will still be the positive x-axis, but as far as this problem is concerned, it's falling straight on the y-axis, so the x-axis doesn't particularly matter. Um, so, now that we have our picture, which I think is, you know, good. You should be an artist. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be weird. <laughs> oh, we're out of focus. Oh, well, we'll just be out of focus. I think he can figure it out. <laughs> You're in focus most of the time. I think it's just because you moved. Oh, maybe. Anyway. So now that we've done that, too fast. the next step that Gary showed me that I particularly liked was write down all the information you have. So, the, or rather the information that you know you're going to need. So we need to know S0. S0 is the position that it starts at, right? And so in this case, we chose the origin as our starting position. Okay. So we know that this is going to be zero. And then S1, or you could also call it S final, okay. um, is going to be down here. It's where it stops. And that is going to be at the bottom, or rather the top, of the tower. So uh, S0, or excuse me, S1 is going to be the height of the tower. Right? And then we also want to know our velocities. <coughs> Excuse me. So here, so again, V naught, that means it's velocity at the very beginning. So at the very beginning, 
at the very top of the tower, just as you let go, it's not moving yet. It starts to move, but when the very split second, split millisecond that you let go, it hasn't started moving. So at the very beginning, V naught is zero. And then V1 or V final will be the velocity just before it hits the ground, or rather just before it hits the top of the tower since it's falling up. So V1 is, we don't know. We're not given that information. <clears throat> And for this problem, there's only one acceleration. It's just the acceleration due to gravity. And because we know that gravity, or because of the way we chose our origin, gravity is pointing up. So gravity is positive. And we're going to use the 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay? And then the last bit of information is our time which from before we know is 3.80 seconds. Now that you have the picture and your information, you can drive your equations that you'll need. The only equation we have to know, in, or excuse me, we have to memorize in physics is just A equals A. And what is that? That's uh, acceleration. So this is the idea of acceleration, and so the acceleration, you know, equals acceleration, basically. Um, which, in this case, I can even put a, a g there, because in this case, acceleration is equal to gravity. Okay. okay? And then from there, we take an integral. Um, you don't know integrals, so just bear, you know, just trust me when I do this. <laughs> uh, so the integral of acceleration is velocity. And this equation that I'm about to give you is the equation that will give me v1 or v final. Okay? And so that equation is going to be g t plus v naught. Okay? And then taking the integral again, and the integral of velocity is position, and this will be my final position. So this will be my final answer. This is what I want, okay? So taking the integral again, you get one half g t squared plus v naught t plus uh, s naught, okay? Now we know that v naught and s naught are zero. So what happens when you add zero? It's meaningless. You just get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. So instead, you wind up with just these equations. So your final velocity is gravity times the time. But this is what we're interested in right here. So before we plug in the numbers, we do what's called a reasonableness check, where we plug in the uh, units to see if they cancel out to become the units we want. Okay. And since we want the height of the tower, we want meters, right? So when we plug stuff in, we're going to wind up with meters per second squared, and that's the gravity, okay? And then we're going to wind up with seconds that are going to be squared. Okay. So you have seconds squared on the bottom of the equation, seconds squared on the top, they're going to cancel, and we're going to be left with meters, which is what we want. So now what we have to do is go ahead and plug in the numbers. So S1 equals 1 half 9.81 times 3.80 squared. And then we'll plug that into the calculator. And we'll get, so, 0.5 times 9.81 times 3.8 squared. And we get 70.82.82. But our gravity, or excuse me, our acceleration, and more specifically the time we were given, have three sig figs. 
So that's all we use for our answer. So in this case, the answer will be 70.8 meters. So the tower's got to be 70.8 meters tall. Okay. What questions you got? <laughs> I think you explained it very well. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Would you uh, like to zoom in and show them your board? Sure. Ta-da. That's... Okay, physics outreach week two. Wee.